Hello, everybody. Welcome to an incredibly special episode of Holly Rantel Unfiltered. You've been asking for this guest for a long time, and I finally got her here. You may remember her from Bold and the Beautiful White Chicks, a movie I've never seen, which apparently is a big faux pas, um, or her most iconic role as Rachel McGuire on Boy Meets World. She turned her love for acting and sexuality into an award-winning adult film career and just released her memoir, Rated X, about how a former Disney princess found her fairy tale in porn. Welcome, Maitland Ward. Oh, thank you so much. It's so sweet. Your guests have asked for me for a long time. <laughs> oh, no, I've been getting requests oh. for you for a long time. And oh, I'm that's like, sweet. I'm trying. She's busy. <laughs> well, we did want to wait for the book and everything, too. Yeah, so no. we, we got a lot of, yeah. Of course. <laughs> I'm always, like, so grateful that anyone's willing to, you know, give me their time. So oh, yeah. however long it takes, <laughs> Midland, I will wait for you. Oh, thank you. It's okay. <laughs> well, we're here now. Here we are. <laughs> so um, I guess we'll start from the beginning. Um, okay. How, tell me a little bit about your early career and then how you transitioned to what you do now. Oh, my gosh. My early career. Well, I started out when, you know, I was a teenager on a soap opera, Bold and Beautiful, as you mentioned. Um, and it was, it was such a fast thing because it was on my second audition. And I had really been such a, like a fan of soaps and, and acting and Hollywood and to be like all of a sudden on the set with like people I had seen on TV before and like, and to be in that world, it was so, it was wonderful. It was wild. And uh, for the most part, everybody was great except for a few people mm -hmm. <laughs> that I speak of. But for most part, everybody was really, really great on Bold and Beautiful. Um, so I started there. And so it was kind of like I had like my first years, I was there. And then not long after I got Boy Meets World, after I left the show, mm -hmm. after I left uh, the soap opera. Um, so those early years, I had a lot of success very early on. Mm -hmm. So as you know, I got kind of typecast, definitely got typecast as this kind of sweet girl next door character. Mm -hmm. I was the flirty, sexy one on, on Boy Meets World, but it was still within the Disney confines and stuff. So um, so it was an interesting thing to transition, to find myself as like a woman discovering her own sexuality in real life mm -hmm. and like seeing who I wanted to be as a person and still being told, you know, you have to be a certain way. You have to be the good girl, be this innocent person figure, but also be sexy, but not too sexy, only sexy when we want you to be. But then in your personal life, you know, you don't want to push any boundaries or anything. And you, you needed to really toe the line with them with, you know, in that age. And also in those early like 2000s and late 90s, it was such a weird time. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. You had to be the virginal girl, but also the sexy girl. Mm -hmm. And that, like Brittany and, and Jessica Simpson and stuff really yeah. fell into that where they had to, uh, I'm a virgin, but I, I'm dancing sexy everywhere and stuff. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's a strange juxtaposition. Yeah. So I had to cover up a lot of like anything I wanted to do with my sexuality or who I was. I thought that it might be, it was bad or, and I couldn't express myself. So many, many moons later, that's where it led me to get into the adult business and, a lot of it just by fate and happenstance because mm. it wasn't something like a trajectory that I planned out. It was never that. It was always just this journey that I was taking mm -hmm. on my own. And then I discovered I had fans coming along for the ride, especially with the rise of social media and stuff. So I got a lot of followers and a lot of interest. And then, of course, I, you know, I started a Patreon account and the rest is history. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Patreon people. <laughs> So really, Patreon was the gateway drug. Oh, yeah. So I, <laughs> yes, it was the gateway drug, yes. Uh, um, well, it was funny because I was doing, like, sexy setups and photos, like, for years, mm -hmm. uh, several years beforehand. And then um, I was getting kicked off of social media a lot. Mm. And then, you know, just for my sexy pictures or, you know, they mm -hmm. were taking things down and flagging me and stuff. And mm -hmm. so I, um, my fans were like, well, why don't you just do – content. And I had no idea what content was at this time. It was, this was at the beginning of 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like, I mean, I kind of knew what it was, but I, I wasn't really in that world yet. I, and I, I wanted to do sort of like playboy-esque type pictures or do, I did a lot of sexy cosplay. So I wanted to be able to like show my body and stuff because I had discovered I liked being an exhibitionist of sorts mm. and, and shocking people and just having fun and being my own self. And my social media following really responded to that. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as I like jumped out of the box of being like just the sitcom girl in the past, which is a great thing to be, but I had grown and developed as a woman and, and you know, found what I love to do and stuff. So uh, 
So I, so I said, oh, oh, maybe somebody will buy a few pictures or something on my Patreon. I, I'll set one up. I'll set an account up just one night. And I did. And I said, but I was like, forget it. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to announce it. So I did announce it. The next day I had like 20 subscribers. Mm-hmm. And by the, when I did finally announce it on Twitter and Instagram mm-hmm. and everything, I had like 20 hundred by the end of the week. And it was like, I was the number one adult creator. <laughs> it was like, wow, people really want to, you know, see my stuff. And they're like championing me on and stuff. So it was really, really exciting. Um, and I didn't think like people had told me you're never going to get paid for being sexy. And yet, I mean, I got told by publicists and stuff, you know, if you're not 25 and you're not the new thing, you're not mm-hmm. going to be, you know, considered sexy. And I think that was a real turning point for me. I know it was where I could say, Hey, wait a minute. They were wrong. I did my own thing and I'm a success at it already so fast. Do you think that the adult industry is a little bit more accepting of people like of different ages and body types and look and stuff like that than the mainstream industry? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause the girls in, in Hollywood, you have to be very skinny all Mm -hmm. the time and you have to be a certain look at least especially back when I was coming up like you really there were types that they wanted to have and 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 especially the Disney girls they were very like strict about things Uh, and they but I think I definitely saw in the adult industry that people there's there's all different walks of life there's like all different types and that's really refreshing and I, I loved that that you know you could have different ages and different you know ethnicity different you know whatever sexual interests and stuff so mm-hmm. it was it was amazing to walk into that because I felt like I was accepted really by that like by people accepting of me so interesting because there's been so many people that I've interviewed who you know came from a life where they felt like they weren't accepted for who they were mm-hmm. and obviously you know these are people who usually fall into like the more sexually charged individuals and are right. shamed for that. Um, right. and then they come into the adult industry, you know, this, this industry, this was to be really like, um, shady and dangerous <laughs> yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And then you find that like, yeah, this, this kind of like embrace embracement yeah. that you didn't get otherwise. Is yeah. That- oh, that's very true. I think it's a safe haven for a lot of people because yeah. they, they find acceptance and they, and I was like that too. I mean, I, I didn't think I'd be accepted like for who I was, sexually or what I wanted to do like that in Mm -hmm. that way. But, um, I finally found an outlet where I could really express myself and I loved it. I love it still. (laughs) Did you find that you had more personal autonomy in the adult industry? I think I, yes. I mean, I just, it was just a different experience than being in Hollywood, just Hollywood. I was just always trying to fill roles that other people wanted me to play. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the adult industry, I was, I'm really able to carve out my own path and my own thing and, and express myself as a human and a woman and everything, um, in a way that, you know, I would never be able to, of course, not in mainstream, but in any way, like Mm -hmm. people just, you know, want to keep you in a box just to keep you in that box forever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So transition to, so how did your contract with Deeper come about? Well, my contract with Deeper is so interesting because uh, I had always heard whispers of Caden along the way, like, and I didn't really know, like, about Deeper. I knew it was starting up. She had one director of the year, Mm -hmm. the first year that um, I, uh, you know, was starting in my Patreon and Mm -hmm. doing all my stuff. And then I realized that, um, and and she was going to start Deeper. But I still, it was was kind of like a parallel thing. But Vixen approached me to do Blacked. Mm -hmm. And that was a big deal to have to, I was like thinking, I, I'm going to do this big professional production. This is, mm-hmm. this is it. Like yeah. everybody's going to see it. Well, the day that my black scene came out, like it went crazy bonkers. The website crashed. It was <laughs> insane. Wow. Yeah. It was like, it broke all records and it hadn't even been out in the press yet. This is, I didn't make like press announcements. It was really a viral kind of thing that Rachel is going to be in porn and yeah. she's going to be on Blacked. And so that same Saturday, my scene came out. Caden was filming Drive. She was filming the first scene of Drive, for which was the big feature film mm-hmm. that was going to be that year. And, and Deeper had just really began four months earlier, launched four months earlier. Mm-hmm. And she lost the co-star. So mm-hmm. to Angela White, Angela White was the other lead. Mm-hmm. And so she didn't, she had such a time crunch um, for like awards and stuff. And so she uh, didn't think that she was going to be able to get it out in time. And so she went on Monday morning to Vixen and said, you know what? I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. I, I lost the lead. I, what am I going to do? I need somebody to have, who can handle dialogue and everything. And that's when Vixen was like, talk to Maitland. And that 
that afternoon, we went to Starbucks. I'd read the script. They sent it over, and I was like, wow, this is exactly what I've been wanting to do, mm-hmm. like really scripted material that had a lot of good acting, and I knew it would be well-directed, and and it was just very exciting. And so we met at Starbucks, and um, we – well, the rest – I didn't sign the contract right then. We started working on Drive. Mm-hmm. But then Drive blew up. Yeah. Drive was just another phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> like it was – because was beautiful. that was announced to the dra- – that was announced to the press, too. So mm-hmm. – it was just going crazy the first days of Drive when it was announced. I beat Bernie Sanders' heart attack so on Google searches. Wow. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a wild time. And then shortly after that, we really re- realized that we wanted to work together mm-hmm. and do a lot of scripted material. And I can't believe it's been three years since yeah. my contract. Yeah, it's been wild, That's but it's been cool. wonderful. And we've made some great projects. And we have another feature project coming out so um, that, you know, people can see right now starting right now yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> depending when this airs yeah. i know they're announcing it tomorrow <laughs> yeah, right yeah so we can't say what so it I is i can't really say a lot yet. about it but i will say that it is like a metaphorical artistic sort of journey of my life it's like uh, it's like natural born killers meets wandavision that's all i'll say wow <laughs> no. wow it's, yeah it's that's pretty cool incredible. it's pretty cool yeah so i guess let's back up a little bit um okay. so you were doing sexy content on patreon yes and i'm assuming just nude stuff <laughs> okay. Cause yeah, at first, know, cause, at first, yes. Cause Patreon did change where they were like, first yeah. you could put porn on there and then you could only put nude stuff on there. Yeah, they did. Uh, I, I broke some rules back okay. then. I can say that, but it was mostly, yeah. Um, cause I started out just doing the nudes and stuff and that mm-hmm. was all Patreon and then, you know, mm-hmm. the sexy nude stuff. And then I was like, well, girls, I want to, you know, try stuff with girls and, you know, okay. and do that. And then, so it was a progressive journey of like what, who I was as a, like a person who I was becoming in my sexuality and stuff. And my husband was with me every step of the way in this. Mm-hmm. We, you know, he was very supportive of everything. Um, and we, you know, it just eventually led to, you know, two men that I worked with in my content who were wonderful, Isaiah Maxwell and Danny Mountain. So, mm. so I was very lucky to get real professional. Yeah. I mean, right at the beginning, because maybe if it hadn't have gone as well and I hadn't have had as much fun or mm-hmm. I wasn't as, you know, it was, I felt very safe and comfortable and confident and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I loved performing and I learned so much from them along the way. So I really was, you know, lucky with that. Yeah. So your first sex scene was with a girl. Yes. And, you know, we have a mutual friend, L Alexandra. Oh, yeah. She oh was, God. okay, she, back, go, go way back. Um, before I was doing any porn or anything, I was doing setups. I did International Kiss a Ginger Day with her. <laughs> well, I was looking for somebody who I wanted to do a cute little. Yeah, it is a day. It's yeah, in January. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so I was doing all those kind of setups for special days and stuff. Right. But um, she, somebody knew her. I knew a producer that knew her, and she was a fan of Boy Meets World. And so we did the setup. We did those cute pillow fights and a little kiss yeah. of ginger. By the end, we were like doing super nude stuff, and like mm-hmm. we were getting like very hot and heavy in this stuff. And she was like, "You know, you are going to do something in the adult business one day." And I was like, "Oh, I don't know. I think this is just fun." I was doing you know photos mm-hmm. and stuff, but the, and then she was right, and I did bring her back to do you know a scene or two, a couple scenes wow. with me, yeah. And then I met people through her, and I did some, mm-hmm. yeah. So then I started doing like group girl and then you know mm-hmm. it kind of progressed like that and what was that wasn't your first time with a woman when you no 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 right? on screen I mean on yeah on screen but not yeah. like in yeah. person yeah. no not with person no and that's something that's, that was so great because I love women and, and I've explored sexually with women and I finally felt like really accepted because every time like in my past I felt oh I have to hide like who I am sexually or mm-hmm. I was uncomfortable with that and I shouldn't have been and actually now that I'm so out in the open with everything I'm finding that most people are really accepting and mm-hmm. really supportive just of me living in my truth mm-hmm. and so I think along the way it was silly to hide so much of myself yeah but yeah so that was that was really fun to you know just explore that way yeah and, yeah it feels like a common thread that we've seen with so many child stars, especially that worked mm-hmm. with Disney, that they, you know, yes, that's become true. like, that's true. you know, in the public's eye, like these overly sexualized women because yes. they, you know, we always tried to cast them as this, you know, innocent person. Right. right. And um, do you think that that's going to change at all? Do you feel I like it's different now? I think it's different in other arenas. I don't know about Disney or Disney Channel. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're going to change really. But I do see more um, 
you know, I do see people, more people living in their truth. And I think social media had a lot to do with that, that people could really connect. And like, you see these people on TikTok and everything who just tell their truths and people accept them and, mm -hmm. and support them. And I, I feel that, I feel that it is changing because I see so many younger people like in their twenties and thirties who are come up to me and women. I'm always surprised by how many women come up and say, I love your stuff. I am so like, ha you're, you're, you're an inspiration for like really expressing your sexuality and being so like proud of what you do and who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that philosophy is changing. It's the older set <laughs> mm -hmm. who generally is more shocked by it. But you know, I was I was talking to somebody because in the day, back back in the day they had to go into like back rooms to watch porn or get their dad's cassette or whatever it was, mm -hmm. and so it was much more of a secretive thing. And I think these generations have really grown up on the internet and having porn being so accepted, mm -hmm. and so I think it's just a normal thing for them, which it is normal. But yeah. um, before it, was, it felt even more taboo. Yeah. How do you think social media has helped in that sense, like specifically? I think people just connecting. Like mm -hmm. I would not be anywhere if I did not have social media grown because mm -hmm. I was told you cannot do certain things. You are not going to be sexy. Nobody will pay for anything. And it, was, and it wasn't even just about paying for things. I really didn't expect to make a lot of money or have such success. I just wanted to express myself and finally be free. Mm -hmm. So there was years that I was not like, you know, benefiting financially a lot from this. I mean, I did comedy cons and stuff but I really think just people being able to see someone as their authentic selves and you know I think Hollywood tries to separate us a lot from mm -hmm. like they 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 want just certain kinds of people usually I mean that might be changing more now but they want people to fit in like in certain types of roles but I think the audience is like they're interested in a lot more stuff than Hollywood has to offer for them yeah I really saw that yeah, I, I definitely feel the same way. It's like, you know, before social media came along in the internet, we were told by a small group of people in power that yes, this is what exactly people want to see. Yes, that's exactly and, it. And so that's yeah. what they put out. And so that's what we see in that's the media. What, yes. And we're like, oh, well, this is what everybody wants because yeah. this is all I ever see. Yeah. And Cosmopolitan's telling me that this is like right. what people want. And then, yeah, when the internet came along, um, suddenly people could actually look and seek what they wanted to see right. as opposed to like what they were just fed. Right. And, and then with social media, people were able to interact directly and say like, right. I actually like this thing. I don't necessarily right. like this thing, even though we've been led to believe that you like this thing. Right. Like, just like how the publicist told me, you know, no 25 year old, only a 25 year old can be sexy mm -hmm. and who make a living at it. And it's like, they were wrong. And like so many of the most successful people in the adult industry are over the age of 30. Which is amazing too. It's yeah. amazing. Uh, it's so impressive. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think it, it speaks to, you know, women coming into their own and being comfortable in their own sexuality. And I think the fans really respond to that. And yeah. that usually doesn't happen for us until we're older, I think. Yeah, that's true. You know, it comes along with like life experience and everything. Oh yeah. 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 And I really feel I couldn't have done it when I was younger. I really needed to take a, a longer journey. I was not confident enough mm -hmm. in myself yeah. to, at all. Uh, I had, you know, a lot of hangups. I wasn't comfortable with my body or with, you know, expressing myself like that. Even though I had desires for that, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. So I'm amazed that some young girls can come in and be so confident and like express themselves like that. I would, yeah. I needed a lot of of years of discovery, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I can absolutely relate to that. Um, so you were the only main cast member from Boy Meets World that did not appear on the 2014 spinoff Girl Meets World. Do you think your budding career in porn had something to do with that? You know what? I wasn't even doing porn at that time. I was just doing my sexy pictures on Instagram that were getting kicked off. So like, do you think like- It did. Absolutely it did. Absolutely. Because you're saying the main cast members, they had people that were like, had little roles on the show come back. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, um, yeah, it definitely, they did not like that I had like this new sexy image and I was getting attention from it. And I was getting a lot of press at the time, a lot of press on like my red carpet appearances and uh, the booby blogs were really big at that mm -hmm. point. <laughs> and so I got a lot of attention from that and stuff. And I was really having fun with that. And I was wearing these sexy dresses and costumes, my, a lot of my cosplay stuff. And uh, yeah, that just turned them the, the wrong way. They didn't like that. <laughs> yeah. And probably you would have taken away uh, the spotlight from a lot of other people. On it the could show. be. And also in a, in a, I guess a more controversial way. Yeah. Like, in a way that they didn't want. They didn't want. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. 
You wrote about growing up in a very um, Christian conservative household where sex was very much taboo. Do you think that that influenced how you viewed sex? Oh, absolutely. Especially like my grandmother, she was very conservative with her, her sexuality and Christianity and everything like that. I mean, not to the point where some people have really conservative parents. My parents, they were very loving and and have become so open-minded and like so supportive of me and everything. But I think everybody just wanted the best for me. Like, I think there was a lot of people in Hollywood who had bad intentions in that way to keep me in a box like that. Mm -hmm. I think my parents just were so worried something would happen to me or, and that I should, you know, follow a straight line and be good and like get, you'll get everything you want and, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But, um, it definitely influenced me because I thought everything, everything I thought about sex was like bad or yeah. like it was like, it was taboo. It was naughty. I can't, you know, do that. But I also realized like as I went along, I put a lot of that on myself. Mm. Like I would hear things, of course, my grandmother wouldn't want me to, she, yeah, she's in her grave now. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, I thought that people would react differently to me than they have when I'm, when I express myself and how I, you know, wanted to be sexually and everything. So I think I, I came, I came to terms that I was like responsible for a lot of like what I thought. I just had such anxiety and Hollywood put a lot on that too. Right. So you were very surprised by the feedback that you got. Oh, absolutely. You you expected people to like, you know, be incredibly negative towards you, all the things that you had heard from the people that you worked with in Hollywood. And then the opposite was true. Yeah. The opposite was true. And I think that's true with a lot of things in life. It doesn't just have to be porn or, or Hollywood or anything. You could, you know, people are, especially women a lot are told you can't do something. You can't be something. No, but Mm -hmm. people that are telling you no all the time, don't want you to succeed Mm -hmm. or they would, you know, encourage you or help you, you know, Mm -hmm. but I did find a lot of people. Once I did speak that truth, they were very accepting and supportive and they were interested. You know, I get a lot of people asking questions about porn and I think they feel, I don't know, they feel like not just my friends, but are like fans and stuff. I, they feel like they know me a little better. Like I was in their living room and I've been mm-hmm. in things that they know that are mainstream that aren't so, mm-hmm. you know, scandalous, but they, they're like, I feel safe asking her certain questions mm-hmm. and stuff. So it's, it's cool. I like when they do that. That, you know, that's so true. I've definitely gotten that feedback as well, where people who grew up, um, you know, with a lot of shame around sex, mm-hmm. when they, they feel like they've connected someone to someone who works in the industry, that it feels like a safe place to yeah. kind of talk yeah. about the things that yeah. they're scared to talk about with other people. Right. Because everybody's kind of like, if we would all just talk, it wouldn't be so yeah. taboo and shameful and everything yeah. that in society. But yeah, and you, you talked about how like it's a safe haven for people to mm-hmm. come that are that have different sexual interests or different, just different than mm-hmm. society would deem you, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really do think it is. It's it's the it's society that you know is is inflicting the pain and the taboo and and making people feel like they're other than or less than if they're in the adult industry and stuff. Yeah. I've always said that I feel like the worst part, the worst thing about the adult industry is the stigma that surrounds yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's exactly what I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's it's like most, I mean, look, everybody has different experiences in the adult mm-hmm. industry. Some people have terrible experiences. Oh, yeah. Just like in Hollywood. You get, yeah. Right. You get mixed up with the wrong people. Oh, sure. Like, you can have awful experiences. Absolutely. In it, in it, which is a terrible thing. But I think, you know, so many people, there are many people who have great experiences with the industry, Mm -hmm. but the stigma that surrounds it makes it difficult for them to kind of like live their life outside of the industry, like difficulty dating, their family disowns them. They can't move on and get a different job, another like career. Were you afraid of any of those things when you got into porn? Uh, You know what? By the time I was doing it, I was having success with my own content and stuff. And it was Mm -hmm. kind of the Patreon year and a half before I did anything professional porn was like a real training ground for me. And and it was kind of private. I mean, it was only the people that really followed me and Mm -hmm. there were a lot of them, but you know, as, as opposed to like the vast society out there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I was a little worried, but I think at that point in my life, I had found success and I was kind of like, I had no fucks anymore. I, when I was younger, I would have been worried about stigmas and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody said to me, wow, you didn't even change your name. And I was thinking that would have been worse for me. Can you imagine if somebody saw me on something and they were like, she's going by some yeah. other name now. It's like everybody knows It would be like I was are. hiding. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that definitely speaks. I, of- they'd especially think I was hiding, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, because you're already out there. You're in the yeah. public eye. Like, you've yeah. been a celebrity. And so, yeah, to change your name would yeah. be a little bit weird. 
that would be weird. And also I, I thought it was really important that I did have my name and my persona out there, mm -hmm. especially by the time we did drive. Cause I was so proud of like doing such a great feature film and having so much dialogue and this great role and stuff. So I really, uh, you know, I went to Caden and I was like, I want to announce this to the press. It was, oh, but it's funny. Like even everyone in mainstream and in Hollywood was like people I knew from both places were like all in agreement that they were going to tear me apart in the press. That mm -hmm. was like, are you sure you want to go to the press? Are you sure? Like you want to give interviews and stuff. But I mean, I had such a fortunate time with them, like such supportive people. And I was really, really fortunate that, um, I, I knew a reporter at In Touch, and mm -hmm. she wrote such a great headline. Like Maitland is on her authentic journey. I don't remember exactly, but it was like it was so amazing, and that really kind of set the tone. <laughs> it's so interesting. I just think about the way that journalism has changed over the years, and the way that yeah. it's you know, I mean, more so in the last few years than in the last few decades, because. You talk about that headline and how surprising that was to you that somebody from a mainstream publication would write about your journey in porn, that you were yeah. discovering your authentic self rather than saying you're being victimized oh, or no, you're yeah. on drugs or, you yeah. know, like whatever other nefarious thing that but would they, be driving yeah. you towards that. And I think about, so um, I was actually going through my mom's archival stuff from the 70s and I found all these old newspaper clippings when she was doing press oh, about wow. her book. So she wrote a book. Oh my gosh, in the seventh. Wow. Yeah, in 1976, I think okay. is when it came out. Okay. So like a couple of years before I was born mm -hmm. and just these newspaper uh, headlines that I found, like one of them was um, the, the lady behind those dirty skin mags. Oh, what was it? Filthy skin mags. Filthy skin mags. And it was just, and I was just <laughs> like, wow, you know, and yeah. this was like super common. And, and I just think about how there was just this automatic, you know, I mean, God, and yeah. some of the interviews she did, they were so sexist. Oh God. Yeah. Oh my God. I the journalists imagine. were just like, what are your children going to think of you? Oh my God. Like it just, just, and That's I just think crazy, about yeah. now how you can come out and you can like be celebrated. Mm -hmm. I'm sure not by everybody. Cause there's still people out there who think the porn industry is an evil place. But right. I mean, do you feel that maybe you're inspiring other people who have worked in mainstream to come out and express their authentic self if they might be interested in going down this path? Do you uh, feel like you're maybe I, paving the way? You know, I, I would hope so. I It was funny. I was talking to an, a male actor uh, the other week, and he was saying, well, people say that, you know, mainstream actors don't want to go into porn, especially men, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, they don't want to be in the stigma of porn and all that. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, we're just don't, we're not confident in our dicks. <laughs> <laughs> He's all really, we're the most unconfident people <laughs> when it comes to our bodies like that. So yeah, it would take, so I really think it takes a specific, you know, skill, skill set. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's true. Especially for the guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For, yeah, for the guys. Yeah. yeah. They don't. Yeah. Um, but I would hope that more people are, you know, thinking about it. <laughs> I'm all for it here. Let's invite him in. <laughs> have you ever had, and obviously not naming names, have you ever had any mainstream celebrities come up to you and be I, like, what's it like? Yes, all the I'm time. thinking about yes. it, but like I'm too scared. Uh, especially for OnlyFans. Mm. Not necessarily site work, although I did have one or two people, w women, but talk about deeper stuff because they mm. really liked, and even maybe in non-sex roles too for, mm. for deeper but, um, yeah, I, I get a lot of people, everyone wants us to know, like, what is it like? But mm -hmm. OnlyFans, when that really blew up, especially in the pandemic, and everyone was doing it, that's when I get questions from, like, random people, like some mainstream, like a couple that I knew. Like, they mm -hmm. want to, and they want to know whether they could do it without, you know, their faces or something. And mm -hmm. they they definitely wanted advice, let's just yeah. say. Yeah, I know. I get that a lot. Yeah. Like, oh, I want to do this, but I don't want to show my face. Yeah. And I'm kind of like. I mean, some people yeah. do that, but, but ultimately, if like if you're going to cash on the adult industry, yeah. the stigma comes with it. Yeah. And you got to like bear that burden. Yeah. You know. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back. <laughs> and of course, we're going to talk about Maitland's new book, Rated <laughs> X. So hang tight. We'll be right back. <laughs> with all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. 
Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, plus enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal. All right, guys, we are back. So, Maitland, you, of course, have just come out with your memoir, Rated X. (laughs) So what inspired you to write this book in the first place? You know what? I... I, I'm not trying to say this to really like brag or anything, but nobody really does have my story. Yeah. And I really thought that it would be not only empowering for the adult industry, which it is, I believe, um, but also for anybody who's been told they can't do something in life or or they've been shamed for something. And, you know, I just thought it would, could be a really empowering piece. I didn't think I'd write it as quickly as I did. I thought I would I maybe start writing it around now or something because it was always in the future. But I had actually done another podcast This was back in like the end of 2020, like when I first did this podcast and an agent heard me talk about how I love writing and I've been really into erotic writing in my past. And I took two years of screenwriting at UCLA. And so I really was interested in that and I was interested in writing my story. And so then she contacted me and we started like forming a proposal to put together. And by like March of the 2021, uh, that's when I got it. So it, it's been a long process. It's like mm-hmm. coming out now, but it's like, wow, I've been, I've been at it since March of 2021, you know? So did you start writing it before you got the deal? No. Well, yes and no. I had a couple chapters okay. that I, that I, yeah. One was about anal sex, which was a really, <laughs> which is in there, but that was a real crowd pleaser amongst women. They were like, they loved it. They were like, yeah. loved hearing about that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think anal sex is one of those things <laughs> that people are so scared to try. Yeah. But I, yeah, it was just funny. And I talk all about cleaning out and like going mm-hmm. stuff. And they were just like, this is fascinating. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of preparation that goes into yeah. it. People, I think, you know, people don't realize it. It's like <laughs> that movie magic, right? You yeah. Know, like, it's yeah. there's there's behind the scenes going on here. People just <laughs> you know step into the anal. I mean, some people do step, step into the anal. Step into the anal. Some people there's, are ready for anal all the well, time. It's kind of. I found out I have less preparation time. Hmm. I have an expandable asshole naturally, really? and I really discovered that. Yes, it was funny. I did my first on screen anal with Manuel. Mm-hmm. He was so sweet. He was like, we're going to take it slow. We're going to do it this comfortable this way. And it went in right away. (laughs) And just, we didn't even stop the scene. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I know. Were you like proud of yourself? I was so proud of myself. Afterward, I was was like, oh my God. I I was really worried ahead of time about cleaning out and all that, you know? Mm. And then I found out, I don't even need to clean out that much. I'm pretty good. I, like, yeah. I, I can get it going. <laughs> I feel like some people just have an innate um, talent for animals. I think it is. No, I think it's how you're shaped in there. It I really is. do. It yeah. is because I did learn um, that there are doctors who specialize in like ass surgery. And you can literally to get expand? like your butthole. Mm-hmm. So there's something about the anal cavity. If you guys yeah, remember, there is like it's, I heard this before. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's it can either go like depending on your body, it might go straight back, it might like go d- down, it might like, right. do, like whatever it does. And then so people who obviously have a more kind of straight back yes. thing, it's going to be more comfortable because the penis isn't going to like hit it. A wall. Right. There's, Sorry. Hit the wall. Every, this is a everyone needs the, <laughs> the uh, visuals no, this, right I here. Know, it's true. No, but, I think that's why some girls are just really good at anals. That, yeah. You know, do it. Yeah. And I guess I think also for I've heard from some women who prefer anal to vaginal that their their asshole definitely expands in a way um, and is more malleable than their their vagina. Hmm. Like their vagina can't yeah. really like accommodate girth and length the way that their their asshole can that's interesting yeah it's true i mean i've i've found i'm i like it very much on camera <laughs> so I, yeah. do you do more anal like did you discover that you enjoyed anal before you did porn? oh yeah but i mean the porn dicks are like yeah. really big yeah yeah they so are. it's a little different and you're on set with yeah. you what you were worried of you're dirty or anything yeah. like that so you're like yeah so it's um so that's what i was more worried about but now i'm yeah i've done a I, I, I've just, they're always asking me to do anal on there. I know that's the problem. <laughs> Once it's you just, do a good, they're it's like, a do it. Slippery slope, man. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> so when you got the deal, 
Mm-hmm. Um, did you like what was going through your head? Were you just like, oh shit, I really have to write this now? Oh yeah, for the, yeah. Um, yes, no. It, it came fast, of course. I wrote it over about four or five months, five months maybe, and then there was editing and stuff. But it's been it's been pretty much in the can since the end of last year or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, or no, since the. Months ago, let's just say, because mm-hmm. the editing process took some time. But yeah, I had, I kind of completed it around August of last year, and then we edited it. Um, but yeah, and it's a weird experience, a wonderful experience too, but very cathartic and very, uh, you know, it's just, it's interesting to write about yourself that mm-hmm. long ago too. Like yeah. some of the porn stuff I felt I was, I had more like, it was right now. So I could, I had, it wasn't as hard to go back, but like going back to my teen years and my childhood and remembering all of that and the Boy Meets World years and, and just seeing who I was as a person and uh, just things that I would have told myself back then. <laughs> and like, but then I was thinking I wouldn't have a story if I had told myself back then all the answers. Yeah. So that is important for everyone to remember, I think. <laughs> so were there, like, did you learn anything kind of new about yourself or were these like transcendent kind of moments? Did they yeah. come up writing it? Yeah. And I also saw like certain relationships and um, certain people in my life, why I fell for them, mm-hmm. why I did certain things to please people. It was, and things, relationships that I thought, oh, th- it was this way. Uh, and then it was like, wait, no, it was, it was really this way. It was kind of mm-hmm. icky that way. You yeah. know? Even on Boy Meets World, I never, like for, for a good while, I never realized how sexual my character was used on the show. Mm-hmm. You know, in a Disney way, of course, that mm-hmm. it wasn't going to push the envelope too hard. But right. I was always like the, the butt of a sexual joke. I mm-hmm. mean, one of my first episodes was a huge food fight with my feet on boys' faces and and throwing marinara sauce all over the floor. And I'm looking back, and I'm like, whoever was in the office with this idea has a big fetish for food and feet. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see it at the time, but... <laughs> what was your uh, writing process like? Um, I went chapter by chapter, and I definitely uh, started out... Yeah, I did it in order, except for the couple chapters that I had written beforehand, uh, like about porn that I, you know, turned in with my proposals and stuff. Um it was, I spent like four or five hours at a time, like just really entrenched in this writing world. But at the same time we were filming Muse 2 last year. Mm. So I was, it was, so at the end when I was getting it all finished to go, I was filming and then I was writing and then I was filming. So it was like just a, just crazy time, like just getting everything out there. But it really was exciting and it really motivated me. Deadlines motivate me. So (laughs) I was, yeah. Yeah. Deadlines are definitely very motivating. They'll either make you like crawl under a rock and like never answer your phone or it'll make you get off your ass and actually do something. Yeah. I think it it works for me. I like a deadline. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so you wrote a, uh, really interesting part about, uh, your Yoni. Oh, yeah, uh, with your husband, which by the way, I <laughs> yes, loved. It was so <laughs> um, so uh, tell us a little bit about that, like what a yoni is for people that don't know. Well, the, and the, the massages the pro- that we have vaginal and penis, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's not like a, it's not a sexual thing. It is, but it's not, they're not like, it's more like it's a yoga kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's very tantric. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's a very freeing process. Yeah. I have to say you just, you're open yourself up to so many emotions and so much it's, it's stimulation, but it's not the same as like having sex with somebody. Mm-hmm. It just is. It's just a very interesting experience. And I, I'm glad I had it. I was very interested in tantric sex and stuff when I, I did yoga teacher training. Okay. Uh, yeah. I've never taught, but I really did it for myself. And so I got really involved in like learning about tantric yeah. stuff. And I was really interested in that. So it was you, fun. It was it, a good experience. It is, it is really interesting, um, you know, how you, how it, it does come across as a kind of like personal spiritual release rather yes, than a absolutely. sexual release. Though, absolutely. Though those two things can be but intertwined they, yes, as well. Yes, yes. That's why it's like more profound, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it's much more, I believe, personal to you. It's like, it's more yeah. like a masturbation experience that's soulful, except somebody's doing it to you. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And do you think that like maybe because you grew up in a conservative household and then like your years being a child actor, you know, with like Disney and like yeah. being – kind of having your sexuality suppressed for so yes. many years. Do you think that maybe you had like a strong reaction I did. to this because of that? I did. 
I, I had a much stronger reaction than my husband. <laughs> he had a good one, but, not a, <laughs> but, but I had the spiritual, like, you know, one. But yeah, that was actually true. And I was finally, I was finally really just able to enjoy this sexual experience of my own or with, with the person. But uh, that, you know, it just was so freeing and stuff. So yeah. And I love the, like, the kind of like, back and forth between you and your husband yeah. and this, you know, just like kind of cracking jokes and also yeah. that he's like up that he didn't know what he was getting into no 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 there. I got him I get him involved in some things he's like what is this like, <laughs> he's like but I'll try it yeah <laughs> I have to say um my favorite line here was when he asked do you mean this girl is going to give me a happy ending yeah. <laughs> and you said no I said this is yoga there are no happy endings <laughs> just the journey <laughs> Just the it's true. But it's so I, true. And I actually like that really made me think because, yeah. you know, every time I think I've reached some happy mm-hmm. ending, you know, we're always like striving for something. I don't know about you, but sometimes yeah. I live in the future a little oh, bit yeah. too much. Yeah. And I'm like, once I get this, yeah. I'll be happy. Once I achieve and then you're, this, yeah. I'll be happy. Then you're and there you're, and I'm like, I'm not like feeling the way it was. And then it was the yeah. next thing. Yeah. And it, and then, but also too, like when you take moments and reflect back, which obviously you you did writing your book, mm-hmm. you see like, you see the journey and the, you know, when you look back, you yeah. know, wide angle, zoom out. Yeah. And you see the journey yes. from a perspective. You're like, it was like, it was that whole process. It was the whole thing. It's that a was story. so special. Yeah. Because yeah, I wouldn't be who I was today if all of those things didn't happen, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was very special. Yeah. And it's like you have, like when you're young, you think I need to do this. I need to, like you were saying, mm-hmm. I need to have these certain goals and get this job and this man or woman or whatever. Um, but then along the way, all the missteps and mishaps and mm-hmm. things that went wrong and, and things you, you know, you did wrong and um, mistakes that you made, they all make your story. And it makes it so much more fulfilling when you, find success and you find yourself. It really is. Yeah. After those, I've always found that like those low moments in my life set me up for some like really great achievement. Yeah. Or some, it is. It's the lower moments. And yeah. I try to remember that when those low moments come. Yeah. Down, yeah. Like, this is it's like hard to remember in the it's moment. It's hard though. Yeah. It's so hard. But you know, if, if you can, I try to like see everything now as a challenge rather mm-hmm. than a problem. Like, okay, this is a challenge yeah. or like a learning experience. This is yeah. a wonderful. I get to solve this problem. Yeah. <laughs> I get to solve this problem. This is a wonderful lesson in patience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. I think it's easier though when you're older, you know, yeah. it, when you're young, it's like you don't even know what, who you are in the world. Oh, so everything is, that's disappointing seems so heartbreaking. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying to the younger people. It's going to be your story if you hang in there and you just yeah. keep going your on your journey. Yeah. Do you feel more comfortable with yourself now that as an older woman? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. I do, too. And w- Yeah, when I was younger, I thought it would be the worst thing in the world because Hollywood told me that, too. <laughs> I thought at 25 I had I was old. Like, yeah. when or at 23, I was, like, aging. No, well, I guess after White Chicks, I really felt, you know, like, um, yeah. So, like, in my later 20s, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's I'm over and I, you know. So, But then now I feel like I'm so much more empowered yeah. and stuff, so. Yeah, I definitely feel that way. I, you know, I, I work with a lot of young women. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, and um, you know, they they feel old at, at 20. I remember. I know. Whenever they say, that. I know. I'm just like. <laughs> but then I also think too, when I'm like, you're not old, I'm old, and I'm thinking about some 60 year old woman yeah. who's like, bitch, you're not old. I'm yeah, old. Right, you right, right. It's all a it's all relative of perspective. But I remember turning 25 and being like, I'm a quarter century. I know. Old. It was. <laughs> yeah. It was. Yeah. And you know, it's so funny because my 30th birthday was so hard for me. Uh, because I remember being a kid. So, you know, my mom was a photographer yeah. and shot for Playboy and Penthouse and Hustler yeah. and stuff. And sometimes when we would go shoot abroad, um, she would bring her family. And of course she'd yeah. go shoot somewhere else. She wouldn't shoot where we yeah. were staying, but I'd stay with my dad. And I remember being with like a couple of models. Um, and I was maybe seven or eight at the time or something like that, very yeah. young. And the guy said to me, one of the male models was like, oh my God, I'm so old. <laughs> and I'm like, how old are you? And he's like, oh, I'm 29. And me <laughs> thinking that I was being so like giving by saying this, I said, it's okay. 29 is not old. You're not old. 30, that's when you're old. <laughs> he's like, great, I have a year. <laughs> <laughs> but in my mind, I was like being so gracious by saying yeah, that. Right, right. And well, so then the little, closer yeah. and closer I got to 30, I just you're remembered like, oh, how my old I am in the eyes of my younger yeah. self. I know. It's so, that's funny. I had a story like that on, when I was on Bull and Beautiful, a guy who was my great friend to this day. He was like, I was only 16, 17. And mm-hmm. he was, uh, I'll tell you that. He like said, how old do I look? And I was like, the first time I met him, first time we're oh on a scene God. together. And I was like, I don't know. Like, 
whatever I said. I said a younger age. Uh, I, write, I write it in the book, but he's like, oh, that's great. I'm 20, I'm turning 29. I don't want to look that old. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> it was so funny. Now we look back on that and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you were turning 29. <laughs> I know. It's just great. Yeah. I mean, perspective is everything. Yeah. So um, you write about a uh, husband uh, oh, yes. in the book, of course. Um, so tell us a little bit about your relationship because you guys have an open relationship. No, we don't have an open relationship. Okay. Yeah, everybody thinks that that's what we were doing. I fulfill all my sexual experiences on camera for the you know for most part. I've had girls and stuff, mm-hmm. and he's very open with that. But he he's monogamous, mm-hmm. and um, this was so much about my wanting to do not only go on a sexual journey but performing and stuff. I just love it, and I mm-hmm. love doing it, and it's it's really a safe outlet for me to you know, experience all these things that I might not in a marital bedroom that, you know, cause it's more normal and it's more intimate and stuff that mm-hmm. I'm, you know, swinging on the chandeliers and stuff yeah, in yeah. the dungeons and all this, you know? Um, so that was a really important thing that we kind of started out doing this together. Like he was helping film for, he was helping, he did, he's a good photographer too. So he did a lot of my early, you know, Instagram and Snapchats and stuff mm-hmm. and my sexy photos and, you know, mm-hmm. things. But he was there along the way when I started doing content shoots and and we really grew and this journey, you know, we took together. I mean, he doesn't go on the professional sets now, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, it was important that he saw me in that environment and, you know, sexually performing and everything and how much that I loved it. But no, we don't, no, we're pretty, pretty normal in our regular lives. <laughs> Can I read an excerpt um, sure. from your book where you talk about, um, how you talk about how he's not a cuck because yeah. I'm sure that's probably something that, yes. you know, men are so like the idea of sharing yeah. their woman with other people is like so foreign to so many people. Yeah. Um, so you wrote, my husband is not a cuck contrary to what the internet or you may believe. Not that there's anything wrong with this particular kink and lifestyle, but it isn't ours. The thing is especially insulting about the cuck assumption is that my sexual constitution is authored by my husband's desires, that it would be impossible for a woman to do these things on her own, and even more impossible that a husband who wasn't jerking off to it would let her. Even in the most open-minded circles, the immediate assumption is that I wouldn't be doing any of it if my husband's cock didn't benefit in some way. Mm -hmm. That really takes power away from a woman's story. Yeah. And that really, when anybody makes that assumption, I mean, of course, I I see why they do it because they don't know. But uh, when they make that assumption, that's insulting to me because I'm this is my thing and this is what I love to do. And I work really hard as a performer and uh, and I've, you know, had the success all this time. And, you know, it just because he wants to jerk off to it. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm taking this. Mm-hmm. Journey. That's why I'm, you know performing for deeper. That's why I'm doing all this stuff. That's, that's what's insulting about it. Cause I don't care if you're a cuck or whatever you yeah. want to do, but it's that he would have to benefit mm-hmm. in order for me to have success in the adult industry and stuff. Yeah. That speaks so much to my frustration about the question that I so often get is, isn't porn demeaning to women. Yeah. And I'm always like, well, how come you never ask about it being demeaning to men? It's always the yeah. women. And that assumption for me, I feel like paints the women automatically as victims. Yeah. They don't have their own agency. Um, they couldn't possibly be sexual beings on of their own volition. Yes, they couldn't exactly. possibly exactly. be exhibitionists. They must have been forced into this position mm-hmm. by a boyfriend or an agent or whatever. And, right. and I agree, it really takes power away from women when you, when you automatically like put us in that, that, that box of like, you yeah. must be a victim. You must be damaged. Like you must be all of these things. Cause like women yeah. don't enjoy sex out in the open like that. Yeah. I think it's changing more and more though. I really yeah. see it with the younger people coming up there, younger women who just, like I said, they come up to me and it's, it's really empowering. Like I had a, it's such a nice girl, lady. She was, she must've been about 30 and she had a, she had a kid and a husband and she came up to me and she was, um, she said, I'm such a fan of your work. And I was like, Oh, she must like boy meets world, you know? Mm-hmm. And she's like, you and Caden are my favorites. And, I, <laughs> and her husband's like, Yep, she loves you guys. <laughs> so I was like, that is so cool. That, yeah. I, I completely thought it was a Boy Meets World thing. Yeah. But she might have watched me there too. I don't know. <laughs> and it's kind of great though, right? To yeah. like have you have like a different evolving fan base now that didn't I, necessarily follow you. That that doesn't necessarily there must be something rewarding about people who enjoy Maitland Ward as who you are now and the work yeah. you're making now, not as opposed to somebody who was in Boy Meets World right, and, I and love now that. is doing this. Yeah. Because sometimes I feel like, I don't know. I think it's cool when guys are 
mostly guys, but there's some girls that they say, you know, they're happy they got my fleshlights and everything because they've been masturbating to me for all these decades. <laughs> I'm like, that is a feat. That is a success. And they never thought they'd see me naked. They love it. <laughs> um, what I also too love about this, this paragraph from your story about your relationship with your husband is that it also speaks to like, so my parents were swingers, but my mom mm-hmm. is definitely like the more dominant, um, experimenter Mm -hmm. in the family and and it was she was definitely the one going out there more often and having sex with people and Mm. my dad was not yeah and um so yeah there and and I think some people would see that as like oh you know my father is like submissive to her but like that that's not the case at all like the only one of the only people that my mom listens to is my dad (laughs) um and there's so much power that he holds like behind the scenes and Mm -hmm. she really like values his opinion and he's the one who built her business so I don't know I just saw like a parallel with my parents relationship in there so I really liked that oh yeah he was so instrumental in building you know Mm help build my brand and stuff Mm -hmm. and we didn't know what we were doing really in the beginning we were just like let's take fun photos and let's do it you know you know things that I just wanted to do and I showed just aspects of my personality and this and I love being sexy and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And then it just sort of snowballed and evolved, but we, you know, we really grew together with it. Yeah. And I think it also says something. I personally think it says a lot about a man, contrary to like public opinion, that who can feel comfortable with you having sex mm-hmm. with other people and not be afraid that like he's going to lose you to right. like, because some you had sex with some guy with a huge dick, like, oh, I'm yeah. so. Um, you know, insecure in my relationship that like my wife's going to leave me right. because she had sex with this one guy because then it speaks to the idea that like a relationship is is only about Yeah, it's only about sex, right. There's so about much more to the, Oh my gosh. All this stuff and it's yeah. and it's not. So I kind of see like yeah. I don't know, I see those relationships in the opposite. Yeah. Way. Oh yeah, I do too. I do too. And I yeah. You know, I hope most more people see it like that. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, I think coming out and like speaking yeah. openly about that is like so incredibly helpful. Yeah. I really wanted to say that. Yeah. I really wanted to get that across because so, you know, women can feel very sexually empowered in their own <laughs> sexuality mm-hmm. and not because of a man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, so, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about, uh, your relationship with Caden and, mm-hmm. um, the work that you guys have been doing together. So, uh, were you kind of, so, you know, there's always this joke that porn and it's, you know, to be fair, it's a legitimate joke most of the time is that porn is just like really bad acting and like the pizza guy with like, oh, yeah, that's what, sauce, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, you can never make a good porn movie there. The acting's always terrible. Everything's always bad. I know that's what they, oh yeah. That's and, what um, I think that your work with Caden has shown that to not be true. So were you really excited to be able to take this other talent that you've, you know, had oh gosh, yes. and, and apply it in your new career? And did you think that that experience was ever going to come up? No, it came about very fast. But uh, I remember I was on the black set and I had a script on there and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was fun. I hadn't really acted in a long time. And I remember somebody on the set was like, you're a really good actress. And I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you know? I've only been doing no, but I mean, life. No, but it was, it was, it was heartening to me. It was like, you yeah. know, oh, because I hadn't been told that in a long, long time. Right. And then to be swept up and drive and deeper was so exciting. I did not know that the features like that existed, really. Well, I, I'm that's, saying they didn't really exist. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> Until recently, I think Caden's really um, oh yeah she's made some some big headway in the oh, industry. Oh, definitely, the definitely. But um, yeah, I so I didn't know that that was possible. And just when I got her script on my desk, the you know that Monday mm-hmm. morning after Blacked, I was just like, wow, this is mm-hmm. this full on script. This is exactly like like an independent film that I would read or a film script that mm-hmm. you know for mainstream. I mean, um, uh, so it was really exciting, and I was like. So we were, we've been able to make such like great lengthy projects. I mean, I have more lines in these projects than I like ever had <laughs> on shows or movies or anything. <laughs> I mean, I have three page monologues at times, Didn't you know, she, say, she, I remember her once saying that she sent you like a three page monologue, oh, like the night before. Yeah. Yeah. That was, so, that was for a secretary, uh, for a scene in Mistress Maitland, the first one, uh, and it was on, yes, it was like, I think it was Valentine's night too. And I was doing some cute little like web show or whatever or for Camp Soda or something like that mm-hmm. or for OnlyFans. But uh, she, yeah, she gave it to me and she's like, here, it was like midnight. She gave it to me. <laughs> I was like, it was like, yeah, it was funny. And you but just- I did it. I did it. And it was really good. That was a really great scene. Were you surprised by what the movie looked like after it came out? Oh, yes. That's why it was so, Drive, you mean? Or mm-hmm. the, the, yeah, yeah, Drive. 
Um, I was so impressed. And I saw the trailer for it, and I was like, I have to announce this. I have to mm-hmm. tell the press this. This is something that is monumental and has not been done before. Mm-hmm. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. In this full length feature that is just, it's like a cinematic yeah. experience. No, I remember seeing the trailer and I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Forget it. I'm done. I quit. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, she's done some incredible work. It's, uh, it's really impressive. So um, you have a new feature that's coming yes, out. Yes, it is. It's going to be announced yeah. tomorrow. Sadly, gonna- we can't do it right now. But um, do you have other projects in the works? Are you ever looking to do anything behind the camera? Are you interested? I in am. Yeah. You know, it's, I actually wrote a, a several scenes and co-directed too. So okay. Not on Deeper, but it's on the other brands too. Mm-hmm. That's one. Okay. Um, so yeah, she's been very encouraging of me to do more directing. So maybe this next year I'll be more writing and directing. So yeah, it's fun. Uh, I, I lean more like I'm a writer, so I, I feel mm-hmm. that is like more of my passion, but I, I'm finding, I really like to like how how it's set up and she shows me how to do shots and how to, mm-hmm. you know, all the uh, technical aspects and stuff. So mm-hmm. I would definitely like to uh, work under her in that at yeah. first just to do yeah. more. But I, yeah, I did co-direct some some scenes, but on the other brands and stuff, or Vixen. Did, what did you find the most challenging thing about directing? Well, I had help definitely from our cinematographer mm-hmm. and also, uh, you know. It's all about your crew, man. I mean, like, Yeah. Oh, you know, I know. I, 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 yeah, I, and I realized that. I was always scared, like, you have to do everything, no. but the, if you have, the right if you have people, a great crew, we yeah. have an amazing crew. Yeah. So that was really cool to like talk about like what shots I wanted and how I wanted it to be. And, and it was so weird because I the first one that I did when I wrote out the script, I was like, it was so amazing to see it up on its feet mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and everything. So it was really cool. It was really cool. So yeah, I like to do more of that. Um, in 2020, you were invited to be a guest on Tamron Hall. And uh, from your telling in the book, the interview was supposed to be a sex positive uh, interview about yeah. your journey from Hollywood to porn. But then last minute, they took it in a very different direction with Tamron even mentioning sex trafficking. Yes. So- I was shocked there. And you know what? I don't know if she was purposely trying to do anything to me. She mm-hmm. just, I don't think she didn't understand. Yeah. It wasn't like she hated me or she was mean to me or whatever. And but the producers misled me on that. And they made it like, oh, we, we love your story because you know, it was after, you know, it was right after Drive and everything mm-hmm. and all the press that I had gotten. So they wanted to have me on the show. And then I just couldn't believe that, like, she was talking, asking me if I'm worried to be sex trafficked on Instagram or something. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, and I, but I handled it. I handled it. I knew in that moment I needed to be a champion for the sex industry. Mm -hmm. And I even like nudged in there. I'm like, oh, but the female directors are like some of the most award winning and Mm -hmm. we have full length scripts and we do. And, but then it was kept trying to be edged away from that to like, but are you worried that if you take a picture online, it's going to be, you know, Mm -hmm. used for bad purposes. And then I was thinking, why is she asking me this? Because that would be kind of weird. Like like, they're going to take my picture and yeah, uh, and she was also asking, like, am I worried about, like, kids being, you know, taken? I'm like, what does this have to do with my story? Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, there's a lot of misunderstanding around Like, that's not legitimate porn. That's no. That's a whole other bad deal. Yeah, like, and there's a lot of hysteria around it. Um, and, I mean, they're, they're – and anybody who knows who works in this in the adult industry and who especially works in the mainstream channels mm-hmm. that you do, like, we, we are not – about sex trafficking. Oh, like it's strict. We I mean, are absolutely, we dislike IDs it as much as you Yeah, do. we don't want it. No. no at all. That's yeah. why it's so offensive. Yeah. And I, but I don't think she was trying to be totally offensive. I think she was just, she just didn't understand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I hope to talk to her again about what we talked about. <laughs> like, I think just have problem, a bigger conversation about yeah, it. Yeah. I think the problem is that people, like, they see the porn industry and they lump everything into one. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's... There's nefarious sides of every industry. I mean, you come from Hollywood. I'm right. sure you've heard oh, and seen yeah. t- horrible yeah. stories. I've, you know, uh, talked to girls who were fashion models, and they said they were exploited and sexually harassed. Mm-hmm. A lot of way models. More. A lot of models by photographers and stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. In the fashion industry, than yeah. they ever were an adult. Right. But it's just like this whole misconception that, like, and again, I think it comes down to the whole like. Yeah. You must have been sex trafficked into this job because right. you couldn't possibly want to do it on your own. Right. And yeah, I just, 
And I think that's really helpful for people like you to come into this industry, to do the work that you do, to show that like somebody, you know, because people would probably have probably said to you, like you had options, you had yeah. other things you could have yeah. done and you chose this. Um, and you did, you chose yes. it. And I think that that really gives power to the choice mm -hmm. of like a woman wanting to be in the adult industry as a sexual creature. So I guess I'm just trying to say I applaud you for that. So thanks. Oh, thank you. I really <laughs> try not to, I'm not, I'm not ashamed, but I never play into a shame card. Like, mm -hmm. and I think that stops them talking because mm -hmm. if they say it and they're just, what are we going to do? If she's not ashamed, she's happy, she's proud. She's, you know, yeah, like, all this stuff. What, oh, like, you I should be ashamed. Anything else in my notes <laughs> like, about okay. like a sexually empowered, <laughs> confident woman. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> Um, anything else in, uh, the book that you're really excited about? I'm, I'm excited. I'm just excited for people to read it and everything. And I'm excited for them to see my journey in porn, you know, mm -hmm. just how I got there. And I think uh, people had a lot of questions all along. And, um, I think a lot of them, all of them will be answered. <laughs> <laughs> all of the questions will be answered in this book. <laughs> so, and it's fun too. It's not, it's, it's sexy and it's serious in parts, but then it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a, there's a lot of funny parts and things and all yeah. my, you know, how I got into the business and all these, you know, little mishaps and things. Yeah. It's cute. I mean, cause ultimately, you know, I mean, we, we work a professional job and we're serious about our work, but like yeah. the porn industry is like kind of a funny place too. It is. Like, it's, I know. Like I'm, I just, it, I, I have so much fun and like ridiculous shit happens and it's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it is. It's, and I think people need to see that more. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, tell us about your, you have an upcoming signing in New York. Yes. Correct. Yes. And, uh, it's going to be on September 15th at, um, powerhouse in Brooklyn. So powerhouse arena. So, uh, with Caden, Caden will be there. And she's been at my Barnes and Noble signing. Too. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, where can people, uh, will you be doing like a, a reading there? Will you be doing? Yeah, autographs? I'm not exactly sure. Question and answer. And people can definitely take pictures and, you know, I'll sign the books and meet people and everything. So mm -hmm. yeah, it'll be, and I think we're going to read some excerpts and, you know, she'll do the moderating question and answer thing. So cool. <laughs> it'll be fun. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, it's thank you so much. It's wonderful. Yes. Um, can you tell everyone where they can find you online? Oh, Maybe we... where they can buy your book? Well, they can buy it anywhere, like Barnes and Noble, Amazon, any bookseller. And when, mm -hmm. it, and when it's out, go to any bookstore and go get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, like Maitland Ward, my, my name is pretty much for everything, right. all my social media and stuff. So. so it's just at Maitland Ward. Yes. Because you, you came in early. You I got that in. name. Yeah. I actually had to, I had to get it back from somebody originally. They mm -hmm. had it. So, but yeah, on Twitter, I mean, so I had to okay. yank it back through legal action. Yeah. Thing yeah. A while back, but yeah. So that's easy. So everybody can find you yeah. at Maitland Ward, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. Are you on TikTok? I am on TikTok. I'm trying TikTok. I I have Sorry. a little. I know. I'm um. I'm just. I haven't announced it like fully, but it's it's Maitland Talk. Maitland mm -hmm. Ward was taken there, and I'm working on that. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I'm just kind of trying it out. It's it's, it's such a different thing. Like it is making right? the videos and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, when I first got on TikTok and I was like, I can't do this. I'm not going to do any stupid dances. I know. I, I don't do that. I know. I, I, it's like, it's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, it is a huge platform now. It is so. though. I know. That's why I'm kind of like trying to yeah. see. I tried you know. to, I tried to sh and shake it off for a long time too. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm too old for this shit. And I'm like, fuck my TikTok. There's so many people on there. I know. <laughs> I know. My TikTok's Holly Randall and filtered. You can find me there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, again, Maitland, thank you so much. Oh, Oh, thank you so on. much. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I know you're amazing. Um, and of course, you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And like I said, my TikTok is Holly Randall unfiltered <laughs> for now until they delete me. Um, oh, have you been deleted a couple times? Or? No, but I get warnings all oh, the time. I was going to say. And they're like, people, yeah, your content <laughs> violates community <laughs> guidelines. And yeah. I'm just like, literally, yeah. the girl was talking about being proud of her curves. We didn't even talk about porn, but oh, whatever. My gosh. TikTok yeah. gets me. Um, and of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these uh, interviews live, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>